So here we are in the warehouse in Warrington. Some of the bikes have been stockpiling for the auction on the 29th of March at the National Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham. We have just shy of 200 motorbikes and scooters in the auction. Uh, they'll all be arriving on the Monday and the Tuesday, available for your viewing on the Wednesday. All the information is on our website if you want to look at anything beforehand. So this first bike here is a Kawasaki GPZ900. Uh, came out in the mid-80s, and each day the fastest bike you could buy. Probably the first production bike that actually did 150 miles an hour. So a real stepping stone bike. Nicely set up. It's been stood for a while, so it wants recommissioning. But it's got a Yoshimuri exhaust and some nice, well-made handlebar risers. So it'd be a good bike for somebody to recommission and use. Uh, next along the line, two under 400 cores. Again, in its day, this was quite a desirable bike. It moved performance levels for middleweight bikes on quite a long way. Made it into more of a cafe racer style, 4 into one exhaust from standard, footrest a bit further back. Really good performer and outperformed a lot of bigger bikes. A standard yellow on there, uh, this one here, same age. This has had alloy wheels put on at some stage in its life, so it's been customised. Neat little 4 into one exhaust. Uh, possibly has some Yoshi Muri bits inside the engine. We've I've not been able to confirm that officially. Uh, but uh, the vendors family seem to think they did add, add some tuning work, but unfortunately no paperwork to prove that. Next along the line, again, a very unusual rear bike. It'll get people looking twice. It's an aerial Huntmaster, uh, 650cc. Unus unusual thing being that it has a BSA A10 engine in there. BSA and aerial were interlinked, but didn't share a right lot of technology. They kept themselves very separate, even though they were owned by the same company. At this point, Ariel wanted a 650 twin. The obvious thing was to pinch BSA, the sister company's uh, A10 model. Looks a bit different, the engine covers have been altered slightly, but essentially, yeah, an A10 engine in an Ariel frame. So this is an MZ Mastiff, quite a rare bike. Uh, later years of MZ, once the Iron Curtain had come down, they were competing with the Japanese. It's actually got a Yamaha 660 engine that they put in the bikes and then surrounded it with a lot of good quality European, essentially Italian chassis components. So, quite a good performer. Another bike that's been stood for a while, so we'll need some recommissioning. Uh, but further down the price scale, so a nice affordable bike that could be put back on the road quite easily. And, again, possibly a future classic. Uh, we have here now a BSA 250 Starfire 1970, so towards the end of the line for BSA. They were on their last legs, essentially, at this point, and uh, not many bikes being made. Interesting bike in that it seems to have gone around the world, this one. The records show that it was actually exported to France when it was brand new. Somehow it made its way to Japan and has spent a lot of its life in a museum in Japan. Came back a few years ago and was recommissioned. Not fully restored because it was in good order. Uh, the engine had been stood for a while so the vendor did a lot of work on the engine internally to get it up and running again. Nice relatively lightweight British bike to use for vintage runs and rallies that one. Next one along, very interesting, very rare bike. This is a, v, a Vincent Black Shadow Series D. Again, 1955 was about the time when Vincent had to give up. Always a very expensive bike to produce the Vincent, we being a V-twin, and the cost of it really killed it off eventually. But the Black Shadow, famous for being, again, the fastest bike you could buy in the day. The Series D, end of the line, like I said, probably the best performer of them all. Uh, 140 of them were made. The numbers have been verified by the Vincent Club. Uh, the last owner bought it in 1967, so it's been in long-term ownership. Deceased estate now, so again, it's been stood for a while. And would stand a restoration or a recommissioning of this one, but we have the Buffalo book and lots of information with it. Another survivor here is the Norton Dominator. Again, long-term family ownership. It was bought by the vendor's dad in the early 60s. From his local bike dealer in Southport, uh, Fred Stevens, famous rider in his day. He used it for a few years and then just put it away. The son took it over years ago with the intention of restoring it, but never got round to it. So it's a real survivor. It's just as it would have been back in the day when it was put away. Nice and original, all the nuts and bolts original, nothing hammered and rounded off. Engine turns over on the Kickstarter, but would make a really interesting restoration back to original or possibly just restore it, bare minimum, to use it as it is. Next one along the line, uh, Triumph 1954, Triumph uh, Tiger 100. This would have been made in about July 1954. 
uh, Triumph Strangely used to make bikes up to the summer break and then started making the seasons after his bikes. This was in the last batch of sprung up models made. Once they all came back off the summer holidays, then they moved on to the swinging arm version. So it's a very late swinging arm uh, sprung up model. Nicely restored, restored quite a few years ago, but to a very good standard, restored back to as it would have left the factory. Uh, no battery, it hasn't been polished up where it should be, it's just nice and genuine original, and has been kept in very good order. Used up till last summer by the vendor for runs and rallies, so a very usable sort of classic bike, this one. Good enough performance to keep up with modern day road conditions, but it's also a really good looking bike in black and silver. So this is a far later Triumph. Uh, obviously Triumph had a rebirth in the early 90s and now make a very successful range of bikes in all sorts of configurations. This engine is arcing back to the old 1950s Triumph, so a big parallel twin. This actually started life as a 1600cc, but officially Triumph offered a 1700cc big bore kit. So this had the kit fit from new and by the dealer. It also had every extra you could find in the catalogue. So whilst the bike retail was about £9,000. The actual bill came to nearly double that. So it has every conceivable extra you can put on the bike. Chrome embellishes, spotlights, uh, backrest, panniers, footrest, even got a sat nav on it. So very well spec bike. It's only done less than 500 miles. Uh, the bloke who bought it had a collection of bikes and cars and basically shared his use out across the board. So nothing ever got much mileage on it. So it looks to be in as new condition, comes with all its owner's books, instruction books, spare keys, everything you need to go with the bike. So this is a late 20s matchless, very much of its day, obviously uh, girder forks and change, lots of controls up here. Uh, that's what motorbikes were like in the day, you had to really know what you were doing to be able to ride them. So much easier now with everything in the standard position. But back in its day, again, this would have been a good performance bike. Been in a collection for quite a while now. Nice and authentic, uh, not sure winning concours, but a nice bike to use, sort of thing you could probably use on vintage and veteran runs. Uh, but still enough performance to keep up with the flow of traffic. Over here we have a BMW uh, Brat bike, they call these now. So this is a 1972 BMW that's been sort of tastefully modified. Sometimes they go over the top and they start chopping things apart. Nothing's been cut off this bike that couldn't be repaired and put back on again. But short and subframe at the back, single seat, uh, aluminium mudguard, shorter exhaust, motocross style handlebars. So it gives it that sort of cut down look, knobbly tyres, a very popular image at the moment. But underneath it all, a really good solid BMW flat twin that'll go forever. So this is just a small selection of what we're going to have next week at the auction. Uh, so just shy of 200 motorbikes and scooters. Of all shapes and sizes, we've probably got over 100 years of a spread of ages. Values from £2,000 up to maybe £75,000. So there's something there for everybody, every shape and size, every manufacturer. The auction is on Wednesday the 29th of March at the National Motorcycle Museum. The scooter section will start at 12 o'clock, with the motorbike section starting at 1 o'clock. There's more information of all these bikes on our website at www.hnh.co.uk. On there, there's information about the specialists who've come time the bikes as well, so you can email or ring people up and ask more details about a bike if you want to before the auction. If not, viewing is available on the day of the auction from 9 o'clock. All the bikes will be there, all the paperwork will be there, all sorts of you. And obviously, stay behind and join in with the auction if you can. Hope to see you there.